Income tax 2023-2024. Business expenses, car and truck expenses, tax software example. Get ready some coffee and stay calm. Because as a taxpayer, you, you really don't have much more to lose. So there's no point getting all worked up about it or anything. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point, we've got Adam Taxman just trying to avoid a dang tax man. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210. Single filer, no dependent. Starting out with Schedule C income, line number 8, 100,000. Let's follow that income through from the Schedule C, which is the profit or loss from business, having an income statement format. In our case, 120000 of income minus expenses of 20000 the, in essence, net income flowing through to the Schedule 1, which is additional income and adjustments to income. Part number one, additional income. Line number three is where the Schedule C rolls in business income or loss of the 100000 rolling from the Schedule 1 to the form 1040 page number one line number eight additional income from schedule one also coming from the schedule c which has that income statement format that net income 100,000 in this case also flows through to the schedule se self-employment tax social security and medicare in essence which is calculated his here at 14,129. That flows through to the Schedule 2, Additional Taxes, Part 2, Other Taxes, Line 4, Self-Employment Tax. There's the 14,129, which flows through to the Form 1040, page number 2. Not the income tax, but we have the other taxes, 14,129. And also... If we go back to that Schedule C, we can see that 100000 once again flowing to the Schedule SE, self-employment tax, where we came to that 14129 Half of that, 7065 is deductible on Schedule 1, additional income and adjustments to income, page 2, Adjustments to income, line 15, deductible part of self-employment tax, 7065 which rolls to page number one. That's how we get this. 100000 minus the 7065 adjustments to income, 92935 adjusted gross income, and then the standard deduction or itemized deductions. We're taking the standard 13850. We're letting the software calculate the qualified income deduction from form 8995 or the same and A, 15817 
getting us to the taxable income, the 63268, page number two, currently calculating the tax at 9228 federal income tax plus the Social Security and Medicare other taxes, 14129 for a total tax of 23357 Okay, that's our starting point. So let's go back to page number one. We're clearly focusing in on the line eight, which is from the Schedule C, and now we're focused on the expense side of things. So from a bookkeeping standpoint, note that the expenses are usually going to be the area where we have the most different categories of uh, expenses. As a tax preparer, we have to be thinking, how much bookkeeping do we want to be taking on and how much do we want the client to do the bookkeeping and or work with a network of bookkeepers to help us. However, no matter how good the bookkeeping system is that's being used, there will be some expenses that are going to be more complicated, and those will typically include car and truck expenses because we might have a mileage method situation and the breakout between business and personal and then depreciation for property plants and equipment possibly also for cars depending on the method that we use and the home office uh, if there is a home office which is common for sole proprietor businesses so these are areas that even if they do the bookkeeping perfectly we're going to have to do a little bit of bookkeeping or understand how we're going to have to adjust from the books of the business to to our books right and so in our case this time we're focusing in on the car and truck expenses so we imagine that we have the client gave us quickbooks or something or some kind of accounting software or they gave us at least the income statement hopefully the balance sheet too if that was the case they're going to probably have something on their income statement for car and truck expenses how would it have gotten there where would they have gotten that number well when they did stuff related to the car and it went through their checking account they probably included it when's that going to happen when they go to the gas station so they pay for gas they pay for maintenance on the car they pay for auto insurance and so on and so forth as those go through their bank account they're probably going to assign it to an expense account of car and truck expense of some shape way shape or form so what do we do with that so we can say well that's legitimate that makes sense but there's a couple questions that we're going to have on that number one is going to be are we going to use the direct write-off method or the the direct method the actual expenses which is what they are going to be reporting because they're doing bookkeeping based on actual expenses or are we going to use a standard mileage method so and then the, the next question we're going to have well uh how much of the car is used for business versus personal is it strictly used for business or does it have a personal component to it now no matter which method that we use standard mileage method or the actual method we're going to have to do some adjustments to the books because even if we use their actual method even if their car was used hundred percent for business they are not going to be recording most likely the depreciation on the car because the depreciation is something that we have to put on the books as an asset as we can basically see here we would put it on the books as an asset and depreciate it right over over its useful life if we're using the actual method which is something even if they wanted to do depreciation they often couldn't do it perfectly because depreciation tax code wise doesn't follow the same rules oftentimes as normal depreciation for straight line or double declining balance methods therefore it's almost easier for them not to calculate depreciation and let us do it at least on a tax basis so that we can use the software to calculate depreciation uh, if we're going to do that calculation so even if we use an actual method and it was 100 percent for business we would have to do that and it's not usually that they oftentimes they don't use it 100 percent for business because they have one car that they're using for business and personal so even if they were doing the actual method we still have to say okay how much of this gas that you wrote off is business versus personal we're going to use have to use some kind of ratio analysis in which case we might still at least have to estimate the miles driven so that i can say well 80 percent or whatever was business versus personal or 
we can use the standard mileage rate, which means that everything that they have recorded into this category of expenses is not what we're actually going to use because we're not going to use the actual method. We're going to use the estimate which means that we have to determine the number of miles, which isn't what we usually do in bookkeeping. We track dollars in bookkeeping. So now we need them to track the number of miles in addition to the dollars or possibly even instead of the dollars so that we can use that method to make the adjustment that we need to make on a standard mileage rate. So in that case, that's often something that the client doesn't do very well because they're tracking their books through the dollars that they're spending, not through the miles that they're driving. So that takes a little convincing on the on our side to convince them to track the miles so that we have the supporting information and can properly take the deduction for the car and truck expense. All right, another thing that comes up just logistically is which one should I use? The standard mileage rate or the actual rate method? And uh, that's a kind of more difficult question than you would think at first. Usually this might happen in the first year of operations when you put the car in effect uh, because then you could calculate both and see which one comes out to be a higher deduction. But remember that when you take the actual method, you can have depreciation that will be involved and that could front load, meaning the first year will have a higher amount of depreciation than later years. And so you're going to have to take that into consideration because because you, we need some kind of consistency typically uh, if we're going to be using one method or the other. In other words, the IRS is going to be skeptical or try to stop us from doing something like front loading the depreciation in the first year of operations with the vehicle and then switching to the standard mileage method after having taken some accelerated depreciation like a 179 or a maker's double declining balance. So, so, so even if we come out better in the actual method, as we compare them, we have to think about it as it, as it works out over the life of the vehicle, not just in the current year, which is a little bit more confusing. Okay, so let's, let's take an idea of this. So we're going to say uh, a car is going to go on the books. Let's uh, try to put it on the books just in terms of the mileage method, which is probably the easier of the two methods to start off with. So for our software in LeCert, I'm going to use the data input form. I'm going to be populating this into the form uh, 2106. So we're going to say the form that it will be going to is going to be the Schedule C form. And then I'll just tap through this. Tut, 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 tut. And then we have... Uh, the meals, I'm not doing all of this. Da, 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 da. We're losing vehicle. Vehicle is used primarily by a more than 5% owner. I'm going to say yes, vehicle is available for off-duty purposes. Typically, we're going to say yes because many times the vehicle will be used both for business and personal. No other vehicle is available for personal use. That may or may not be the case. No evidence uh, to support your deduction. I'm not going to no, no written evidence to support your deduction. So I'm going to keep those three description of the vehicle. So you probably want to be pretty specific here, but I'm just going to say truck for our case and then uh, date placed in service. I'm going to say 010123, uh, let's say the beginning of the year. And then we have to figure the miles. So I'm going to say the total miles are uh, 10,000. And then I'm going to estimate that 8,000 are for business miles, 8,000, which is 80%. Now, again, how would you come up with that? Well, ideally, they would know the odometer at the beginning of the year, and they could subtract where the odometer was at the beginning versus the end of the year. But again, you have to convince a client to do that or do that yourself because that's not something that you typically do as part of your bookkeeping because you're, you're tracking the miles, not dollars in this case, if we're going to be using a mileage method. Business miles, how do you come up with that? Well, ideally, you track all of the, all of the, you make the Google Maps for your trips that are not going to be commuting miles. And you, and then you, the, you pick up that information uh, and you track all the miles that you're using. Some software helps to do that. I think like a QuickBooks, for example, has mileage tracking information now it's not perfect you know but it, it'll give you an estimate of the miles right 
And so the more documentation that we have on that to, to legitimize those trips, the better, because although we possibly don't have to give that information to the IRS when we file the tax return, the miles and auto is a huge deduction and therefore in the event of an audit they are almost surely going to ask about verification of that information so we're going to need it in our records i'm just going to say commuting is 500 and we'll keep it at that so let's go okay so then when we go back to the schedule c we're going to see that we have uh, the 5000 uh, 240 that has now been populated in the car and truck expenses. Now, this number is not going to match, of course, what the client gave us in the bookkeeping or what we calculated, say, from QuickBooks or whatever accounting software, because we counted based on dollars and this is counted based on miles. Therefore, we're going to have to do like an adjusting entry, a tax adjustment, right? To make this the number that we're using because we're using a mileage method for taxes versus what we have on the books based on dollars spent and then we can see the calculation in another worksheet so here's our calculation worksheet so we have the total miles of 10,000 business miles are 8,000 that's of course 80 percent so it's using you know it's giving us that percent and then we've got multiply line three by 0.665 which is of course the rate that they are giving us that rate is pretty reliably adjusted year over year for inflation and does a fairly good job of estimating all of the car expenses that would be there usually on average if you were taking the actual method, right? So we're gonna say then this is the 8,000 miles that were business miles times the 0.655. That is where they get that 5240. Uh, and then they got the depreciation portion of the mileage is uh they're, they're breaking out the depreciation portion versus for the other portion for the miles so they're giving you kind of a breakout of the amount of that that's being applicable towards depreciation versus other like gas and whatnot and then here's the actual expenses we didn't put any actual expenses in so of course it's currently taking the standard mileage rate of the 5240 which is pulling into the uh the schedule c now if i go back on over here and say okay we also uh have up top in our expenses you'll note here parking and tolls those are expenses that could actually be included even though we're using a standard mileage rate whereas these are going to be other actual expenses which we would not be taking if using a mileage rate so in other words if i added another 150 dollars here and go back on over now we're at 5390 so i'll green that one up we're going to go back on to the vehicle expenses so now we've got the same 5240 calculation for the standard mileage but then it added another 150 to get to the total of 5390 so those those can still be included even if using the standard mileage rate whereas if i if i put information into to, 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 to these the actual expenses like gasoline let's put like 300 on the actual repairs is 400 or whatever and then I go back on over and I look at my worksheet. We have then the same 5,240 broken out, but now it's giving me the actual expenses of 300 uh, plus the 400, which give which brings us up to to the 560. Obviously, the 560 is less than what we calculated on the my, on the standard mileage method, and therefore we're still taking the 5,390. So we're pulling over. Uh, the same number here. Now, if I want to compare the two methods, uh, typically you're going to do this in the first first operations or when you first put it on the books because you need to calculate the depreciation. And if you take the actual method, you're probably going to be front loading the depreciation. And therefore, if you do, do the actual method versus the standard mileage method, it might lock you in to having to keep using the actual method because you took advantage of that front loading of the depreciation. So now I'm going to use a different screen to input into the software here because I want to use the depreciation screen so we can add the depreciation, which again is something that typically will not be there 
on the bookkeeping because they're just doing stuff based on cash and depending on us to do at least tax depreciation usually. So I'm going to just put generic truck, which is not what you would typically want to do. You want to have the make and model on it and and maybe even a license plate number and whatnot so you can make sure to identify it. Uh, I'm going to bring that to the form uh, form 2106 so that I can be the compare so I can see the comparison between the mileage method as well as the actual method. Let's start putting it on the books for something that's going to be quite low so it will be below what we're going to calculate for the mileage method again in our comparison. So let's say it was on the books for just like $1,000. I'm going to use a method of a maker's five-year auto limitations apply. We'll get into depreciation methods later, but just the fact that it's makers means that it's a double declining balance usually and usually a mid-year convention and uh, five-year property over five years and auto limits apply, which means that there's going to be some restrictions generally for the automobiles because automobiles are an area where the IRS is skeptical because people could mix kind of business and personal. In other words, it's common for people to try to get a really expensive car, which they don't really need to take them from point A to point B, but because they like an, to drive around an expensive car, right? So, so, I'm, so in any case, that's why the, so we'll talk more about that stuff when we get to the depreciation. So we'll keep that for now. And then we're going to say down here, I'm going to say no evidence, no written to, to, to vehicle is available for off duty. No other vehicle is available for personal use. I'll check vehicle is used primarily by a more than 5% owner. So employees providing vehicle to employees, automobile mileage. So I'm going to do the same uh, mileage thing, which we said, what did we say? We said it was like 10,000 total miles and 8,000 was business miles, 500 commute. Average daily round trip commute, I'm going to put two. I'm not going to put any other actual vehicle expenses in place at this time. Just comparing the actual expenses, which will be the depreciation versus the mileage method calculation. So if I go back to the forms, Schedule C, you can see that it's still calculating the 5240 for the car and truck. If I go into the worksheet, which I can find over here, which is nice, then we can see that we have the... 8,000, once again, business miles versus the 10,000, 80% business. That 8,000 times the rate of the uh, 0.655 or the 65.5 cents gives us that 5,240, which is breaking out between the depreciation and other. We have the actual expenses, which all we put in was the depreciation. So the depreciation and 179 calculation, which is obviously less than the mileage method, therefore, it's opting for the mileage method of the 5,240. So let's uh, close this back out, take a quick look at the depreciation schedules. I'm going to go to the regular depreciation. You can see that it's taking the 1,000 uh, is put in place. Notice that it's taking 80% of that uh, 1,000 because it's still using the calculation of the business miles to determine the the amount that's going to be allocated to the business so in other so in other words even if i was using the actual method it's still kind of figuring the the business portion that is going to be used special depreciation is going to be uh the 640 and then the depreciation basis is now 160. let's pull out a calculator just to see that again this 80 percent where is it coming up with that that's going to be the 8,000 divided by the 10,000. So it's going to say that we're using it 80% uh, for business. So if I take the 80% times the cost of 1,000, that would be 800. The special depreciation is going to be calculated at the 640, which is an accelerated depreciation, which we'll talk more about later, that the system is calculating for us, front-loading, in essence, the depreciation. So I would subtract out the 640 and that's where it's getting the uh, depreciation basis of the 160 and then it's calculating the current depreciation of the 32 using a double declining balance half year convention we'll talk about depreciation calculations later for now we can see that the software is giving us that calculation and it's lower than the mileage method which is why 
when we pull the information in here, it's, it's usually in the mileage method. Let's go back on over and say, well, what if the car was on there for a large amount? Let's just put the, the car on there of like a $100,000 car, right? Which means, do you really need a $100,000 car to drive from point A to point B for the business? Should that be an allowed? That's kind of where the, you know, debate comes in sometimes, right? But if I go back on over to the Schedule C, you can see now it's calculating the depreciation. It's moved from the car and truck to the depreciation. If I look at the calculation, we still have the 80%. It's still calculating the mileage method of the 5,240. But if I look at the actual expenses, clearly the depreciation is at the 16,160 is going to be uh, greater. And therefore it's taking the actual expenses, which in this case is just constituting that depreciation. Now notice again that depreciation gets a little bit complicated because uh, sometimes people when they start a new business they already bought the car and they're transferring the car to business use or something like that which gets a little confusing in terms of what's the cost because they didn't like buy it uh, at that point in time and also once again note that this depreciation uh, it's front loading because of the special depreciation and because it's using a double declining balance method. So when I compare the methods of this method versus versus the mileage method, it's likely that it could come out better to use the to use the actual method in year one. But in the following years, it's going to be at the at the cost of the following years where I'm not going to get this massive front loaded uh, depreciation possibly that that is happening here so that's something to just basically keep in mind again we'll talk more about depreciation limitations double declining methods and that kind of stuff with depreciation when we get to the depreciation side of things let's bring it back let's bring it down to like like a fifty thousand dollars here and then let's go down and add some other stuff so in the actual vehicle we, we might have the gasoline and whatnot. Now, this is stuff that would probably be on the bookkeeping. So what's going to be in the bookkeeping, not the depreciation, not the miles, although we're going to hope they track that, but the things they actually paid for, which we can get from the actual income statement from something like a QuickBooks, like the gasoline they paid for. Let's say it was, you know, uh, 300 repairs. Let's Well, let's say the gasoline was like, like 1,000... 600 the repairs was whatever and in tires insurance let's say insurance was 1800 and then miscellaneous auto license and then personal property taxes let's say interest vehicle uh interest car loan uh, the vehicle rent or lease payments uh if it was a lease include uh inclusion amount state inclusion vehicle employer provided and so on so let's add that to it and so now i'm going to go back on over and say all right let's go back to my schedule c and so so now it's breaking out between the two of them now because it's still using the the actual method but now it's going to break out the portion for depreciation into the depreciation area and the car portion up top so if i look at this then We've got the standard, the mileage method, 10,000, 8,000, still 80%. So it's still using that ratio. When we get to the actual miles, it's taking then this 5,240 and showing the breakout between the depreciation and the other if we were using the mileage method. But we're not going to because the actual method is showing uh, the gasoline repairs and so on. And then the miscellaneous the auto, uh, the vehicle, and so on, to de plus the depreciation at the 16,160 for a total of 19,470. That, of course, is greater than the, that is going to be greater than the mileage method. And therefore, we're going to be using that number. But we could see that the car and truck expenses are going to be the 3,000. So it's, it's breaking out between the car and truck expenses of the 3,180 and the depreciation 16,160. And that's where it's coming up with that 19,470 that it's breaking out between the two lines. So if, 
meaning it's breaking it out between these two lines. These two together is going to add up to that 19,470. 19,470 minus the 3310 is going to be that uh, 16,160. Now, also just realize you have to be careful in the actual bookkeeping that they're giving you, right? If, if they gave you the actual bookkeeping and they paid for gasoline and whatnot of 1,600, then the question is, do I put it at 1,600 or do I take like 80% of that, uh, right? Because, because, because I'm going to say that's for business and personal. And so you got to be careful and say, should I be taking this 1,600, 80% is for business. So I'm going to bring this to uh, 1,280, for example, because that would be the business portion of the actual expenses that were used. So you got to be careful about that because different software might calculate that differently, you know, depending on how you're going to put the, the ratios in there. So if I pull that back on over, it's changed this one. If I go down to the depreciation schedules, you could see here it's calculating the depreciation by taking the business portion of of the 80%. If in other words, if I changed this 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 uh, percent calculation for the ratio, let's say I go back up top and say that uh, duh, 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 this ratio was 9,000. So so then I go back on over. So now it's got the 50,000 and now it's got uh, the 90% business, 9,000 over the 10,000. So it's using this calculation for the depreciation, but possibly not for the other actual expenses, which you have to make sure that you're properly allocating between business and personal, possibly using you know, the same percent you would think.